But we have to see and, did I lose it? There we go. And is likely to result in substantial injury to the organization. Yes, we call that civil damages. This provision definitely applies. We know because we're just working through the language. The lawyer, sh what should we do? The lawyer shall proceed as is reasonably necessary in the best interest of the organization. Huh? Well, that was no damn help at all, was it? <laughs> proceed in the best interest of the organization. Give me some real guidance, will you please? Well, let's try this one. Again, we, we have basically two options. Quit or fight. So, let's try quit, because it comes up first, which may tell you something about the drafters of the ethical rules. So, the option to quit, declining or terminating representation. Well, let's see. The lawyer shall withdraw, shall withdraw, let's see if we have to, shall withdraw from the representation of a client if the representation will result in violation of the rules of professional conduct or other law. What, the rules of professional conduct, no, not yet, anyway, or other law. I'm leaning towards that there may be a violation of other law here, but let's keep going, because I'm not certain yet. That tells me if I must withdraw, do I have some options? How about part B? Except to state in paragraph C below, which doesn't matter for this discussion, a lawyer may withdraw if, go down a couple, the client persists in a course of action involving the lawyer's services, well, yes, the general manager asked you, that the lawyer reasonably believes is criminal. Remember the station nightclub? The nightclub owners, two brothers whose last name is Derdarian, both got jail time for their criminally negligent conduct in allowing pyrotechnics whose fire reached the ceiling of the station nightclub, causing the 100 deaths and 260 plus injuries. So I'm pretty sure that the lawyer may withdraw based on the threat of criminal sanctions, but let's continue. Or the client insists upon taking action that the lawyer considers repugnant or with which the lawyer has a fundamental disagreement. So, may you withdraw? Well, if you consider going against what the fire marshal says repugnant or with which you have, what do they say? Fundamental disagreement, you may withdraw. Or, if you don't happen to share the risk manager, general manager's opinion that this is merely a technical violation of the fire code, you may consider that judgment to be repugnant and you may withdraw. How may you do that according to the drafters of the ethical rules? Well, they tell you. Let's see what they say. Upon termination of representation, so if you do decide to quit, here's how. A lawyer shall, so this is what you must do, take steps to the extent reasonably practicable to protect a client's interests, such as giving reasonable notice to the client, allowing time for employment of other counsel, blah, blah, blah. It's 5.45. You've got 6,000 drunk death metal fans ready to wreak havoc, and you have no possibility of stanching the bloodshed by calling in security from anywhere else. There are no extra cops, there's no extra private security. How will you do this reasonably practicable notice that the ethical rule requires? Personally, I don't have an answer, and I know that my friend Mike didn't either. Let's see if the ethical rules help us out any more than the fabulous help they've already provided, since I personally don't feel like we've reached the end of this analysis. There's one more provision. The lawyer as advisor, that esquire, counsel, counselor thing. Remember, we're more than just lawyers. These titles actually have significance, at least they used to when we were 
barristers and wore powdered wigs. They still do, according to the ethical rules. We're advisors. So let's see what this provision says. In representing a client, a lawyer shall, so again, we're, we're in the category of what we must do, shall exercise independent professional judgment and render candid advice. Cool, that's what we want to do. In rendering advice, a lawyer may refer not only to law, not only to law. You mean we can bring to bear other things that we think or know besides what we learned in our elite institution of legal training? Why, yes, we can. The drafters of the ethical rules say we can. What can we think about aside from the law? We may refer not only to law, but to other considerations such as moral, economic, social, and political factors that may be relevant to the client's situation. Does anyone think at this point that you, as the lawyer, as the general counsel for this venue, facing mayhem on your property, does anyone think that you are not permitted, under the ethical rules, to say, the lesser evil is violating the fire code. Would you all agree that you may, that you may continue to represent this venue even in the face of a potential violation of the fire code, even if you are quite certain that you will violate the letter of the fire code? Is there anyone here who thinks that you must withdraw? Let the camera reflect, no one is raising their hand. Having laid out this scenario, let the brave ones be counted. Is there anyone here who would withdraw rather than advising your client, the venue, to open the doors and let the show go on? Is there anyone here who would try to get out? Cool. Why? Well, I would, before maybe trying to get out, try and get them to cancel the show because you could have the problem of not only violating the law if you tell them to go ahead and have the show, but then there's probably some unbelievable chance the fire marshal's right and the place burns down and you're in double trouble, I guess you would say, where not only did you tell them to go ahead and violate the law because there's no moral problem with that, but then it turns out you were wrong. And at least this way, hedging your bets sounds bad, but that's kind of what you're doing, where you, worst case scenario, one bad thing happens. You don't violate the law and that thing is not. I will tell you from reading the Arizona attorney pages on lawyer discipline, it appears that your chances of getting sanctioned are worse if you're wrong than if you're right. It always helps in these ethical balancing tests to turn out to be right. So I think that's an excellent point. Yes? Is there another, a third option where you can have the fire marshal tell you exactly what was not up to code, have Slayers start so the crowd's not held up, fix whatever it is as the show's going on, have the fire, and then not have to worry about all that? How long is the, I don't know how long it takes the final to The question in a nutshell is, is there a third way where you can have the first act go on and at the same time kind of try to address the fire marshal's pyrotechnic problem? The answer in this case is no. Uh, simply put, there wasn't. There wasn't enough time. And candidly, dealing, for those of you who deal with artists, it's not the easiest thing to deal with an artist who is getting ready to go up. Um, the artist isn't talking to you, first of all. I mean, you're the general counsel in this scenario. You're the general counsel for the venue. You're not getting access to the artist. You're getting access to the artist's representation or the promoter who is basically telling you to get the hell out and go back to your office and do your own damn job. The access to a solution, elegant though it may be, the access to that solution, the time is long since passed. So 
I would have loved for there to have been a third way, but fixing the pyrotechnics or having the fire marshal explain it in some cogent manner, that was not one of the options. Yes? Uh, having them perform without the pyrotechnics was an option that the talent foreclosed. Rob Zombie said, essentially, no way in hell am I performing without my pyro, and Slayer said, no way in hell are we performing without Rob Zombie. Yeah? Well, if, I mean, this is getting a little deep, but... Oh, go there. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, there is a way, it's, you're presenting us with two options, and I feel like there was more. I feel like uh, you could have let them into the venue so they're not outside in a riot, and then, you know, trying to either fix the pyrotechnics or tell the crowd, these performers are, are refusing to come on because of this and that. So, I mean, I wasn't there, obviously, but it seems like there's probably more than just the two hard lines. But then they tear apart the facility. Let me say that again. But then they tear apart the facility. That, that's exactly what would happen. So, let me do this because we're, we're out of time. As always, we've run over on these things because you can never answer the question. It always depends. Number one, let me applaud you guys for creatively thinking through this. You're looking for a third way. You're looking for more than three ways. That's exactly what you should be doing as lawyers. You know, there's a box. Ostensibly, there's a box that you're supposed to be in. You know, that's Tim and I. Um, there's a box that you're supposed to find the answer in. But a good lawyer will reach outside that box, not only because our clients want us to, but because that's what distinguishes the better lawyers, our creativity, from the worst lawyers, the ones who simply walk in lockstep and do what the rules say. Not saying that you should break the rule, Bill Belichick got caught. I'm saying look creatively at what the rules say, because as with the ethical rules that I walk you through here, they can mean different things <coughs> depending on how you look at the facts. Thanks.